Hey guys, I hope you're all doing super well today. So I'm going to talk about the books I read in January now. I know it's been a little bit late, but I've been on this exchange program, so I haven't had the time to film or anything. The first books that I read in the year is actually this trilogy right here. This is the first trilogy in the Grishaverse. Oh, it's the Shadow and Bone trilogy in the Grisha universe. So this is Shadow and Bone, Siege and Storm, and Ruin and Rising, all by Lee Bardugo. I decided to read this in the beginning of the month because at the end of it, King of Scars was coming out, which is another duology in this series. To be honest, this was like a very typical YA, so you're following these two characters called Mal and Alina. Alina is the main character and they basically both grown up in an orphanage and they've basically been best friends their whole life. And then you follow them a little bit later when they have a job where they're going to cross the fold. And the fold is basically this huge tear that has split the land and to get to the sea you kind of have to cross it or you have to go all the way around. So in the beginning of the book they are having to cross this tear but inside there's basically these creatures who eat humans and it's very seldom that people people actually kind of make it through um, to the other side and while they're in this fold Alina discovers that she has these special abilities and from there the book kind of takes off. Um, so I, I like the first one, I think I get the first and the second book three stars and then the last one four stars and I might have kind of given them higher rating than I should have because I think they accomplished what they were trying to do but generally they were just like a little bit too typical young adult fantasy for me uh, right now at least I'm not really into that at the moment so maybe it's my fault for picking them up but I think the second one really bothered me because it's just kind of like the romance in this book are having so many issues and everything would be solved if they just talked to each other and it really bothers me when that happens in the book like they literally just need to talk and they would have solved all their issues but it just doesn't happen until like the end uh, I really like the twist at the end and that's why I gave this one four stars and the last chapter in this book was absolutely amazing I cried so much and I usually cry when I read but this one was like so emotional um, my mom was sleeping over at my house at the time and I read it to her and I could barely like I could barely make it through because I was crying while I was reading like the last chapter, actually the last page, but it was just like the perfect ending and someone told me that the main character doesn't end up with the love interest that they would have wanted it to end up with and I was really scared that she wasn't gonna end up with the person that she should end up with, but she did, so I don't know like whoever the freak was who said that they wanted her to end up with someone else like that is so weird you know when there's like a love triangle but there's really like almost three love interests for Alina so yeah it was a very typical YA I'm glad I read it because I really want to continue with uh, the Six of Crows duology as well as the which I actually have on my shelf uh, as well as the King of Scars duology which follows uh, a character that's in the second book who is really cool character I really liked him Nikolai I think he's called then I read World in Winter by John Christopher. I really like these editions. I think there are five books who have these absolutely beautiful illustrations and I've had this one on my shelf now. It's the oldest book I have on my shelf that I haven't read. So I had it for two years and now I just decided to like read it, get it over with. So basically uh, this is a classic. I think it's published in, let me check. Okay, so it's first published 1962 and in this one you're following what would happen if the world went into like another ice age. The main character Andrew is having issues with his wife and so right before the ice age starts they basically split up and they mute, meet this new couple and from there you kind of get to follow the main character as he is having his relationships with this other couple and also what would happen like to the world and what he has to do uh, when this new ice age comes and I like to believe that if the ice age actually came we would be more civilized than this I, I, I don't want us to think that if this ever happened we would become like savages again um, it usually happens like that in these types of books for some reason but I don't believe that would be our nature I don't know I think that we've come further than that but uh, it is a really interesting book. I actually gave it one star, which is strange because now that I'm like thinking about it, it made me think of the different things. Like for example, if you live in northern countries, uh, especially like western, like western countries, like in a more civilized era of the area of the world, like where we have our shit together, like our houses and money probably wouldn't be worth anything because we all have to travel to the countries on the equator and. Uh, they would have basically all the power and also if you have more money you're more likely to uh, survive and I hate to think that that's how we would react but it was a really interesting way to look at it I thought the action of the weird like the end was very weird and some of the things like that happened just I didn't really understand so I gave it one star but 
I don't know. I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna move on. Then I read Arch Enemies by Marissa Mayer. This is the second book, and I think it's a trilogy, maybe. Um, she's the author of the Lunar Chronicles, which I all read and really liked, which is a young adult sci-fi. And this is a young adult kind of sci-fi. It's like a futuristic sci-fi uh, where there are these people who have superpowers and they're basically the anarchists, which at some point um, gave prodigies, which are the people with superpower, freedom because they were very suppressed in society when they started becoming public. And then there's these people called the Renegades, which is the name of the first book, who basically tried to build a government and restore the power and to the people and fight the anarchist. And you're following, I want to say Noah, but I don't think you're, Nova. You're following Nova, which is the niece of um, Ace Anarchy, which started the anarchist. And you're also following the child of, of the leaders on the Renegades, Adrian. And they both have alternate, I want to say alternate personalities, but like alternate superheroes and they're both trying to like fight the other and trying to infiltrate the other gang if that makes sense but really there's also like this romance thing building between them and what's really interesting is that at the end of this book they like literally hate the others like double personality but they don't know that that is the other personality but they're actually falling in love with each other as people i don't know if that makes sense so i'm excited to read the next book and i will definitely continue with the series but Nothing like fucking happened in this book. Like I swear to god like nothing happened Like I don't know like it was just kind of like a middle book syndrome type of book like Like yeah, nothing happened Literally it was like 500 pages of 500 pages of nothing uh, Which was just so like blah like and the main character she just doesn't get it done like she's trying to like infiltrate them But I feel like only something happened in the last 50 pages like what was she doing here? Like I don't know I literally don't remember what the first part of the book was about. Next, I read The Last Wish by Andre Sapkowski. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. This is the first book in the Witcher series. I think this is like multiple series. I know the first one is three books and this is the first one. Uh, I think you're supposed to read this series before you read the other series, even though I think the other one is chronologically earlier. I don't know, I think it's because of this is publication order. So in this one you're following this witcher called Gerald and a, a witcher is basically one that kills magical uh, creatures and he's hired in different parts of the world, R Rivia, to basically assassinate creatures, animals, and yeah, for money. And it is kind of strange because it's basically loads of short stories. And I've never read like a fantasy that is written in short stories. I mean, I think it's really interesting and I'm definitely going to continue with the series, but I did have a little bit of a difficult time getting into it because there was always like new characters and some of the old ones would like pop up from the first um, short story and then in like the fourth one. And so I didn't really remember all the characters, but I think if I read the whole a trilogy, then maybe I would get into it. So I'm definitely going to continue with this, but it was like a little bit of a difficult to read. And this is also such a well-loved fantasy and a great fantasy writer. So I don't know, I felt kind of like cross that I didn't love it as much as I expected. I actually gave this book two stars, but I'm still going to continue because I think that um, understanding the whole world would just be very satisfying. So that's that. Uh, okay, so the last two books I read were The Well of Ascension and The Hero of Ages, which are the two last book in the first era trilogy of Mistborn. Uh, I love this series and I love absolutely Brandon Sanderson. I think his books are amazing, but this was directed to a little bit of a younger audience. It's not like young adults because the fantasy element is still very advanced, but the, even the fantasy element is more explained in these books than they are in like the Stormlight Archives. In the Stormlight Archives you kind of have to like interpret things for yourself or you have to kind of like think and put the pieces together. But in this book they are like very explaining stuff when they are revealed so that makes it seem like it's for like a little bit of a younger audience. Following this main character called Vin and Vin was basically grown up as like a street urchin and she's taken in by this thieving crew and the main man main leader there called Kel, who is a mistborn, and the whole world uh, is based on that people consume metals and then they give them different powers. And then Kel basically reveals to Vin that Vinci is a mistborn, and from there the first book takes off. These two are completely different than the first one. I definitely love the first one more. Like, the first one is amazing, like it was a five-star book. 
This is a little bit different because there's a very important character in the first one who gets killed off. I'm not going to spoil too much, but it completely changes what the two second books are about. Like, I love the way that the magic, like, evolves and you get to, like, discover more and more. And I think that's what I love about Brandon Sanderson's books is that it's not, like, stating, like, this is how it is, like, this is how it works. But you're also constantly discovering more information about the world and the magic system as you're reading the books together with the characters. So you really feel like you're involved in the books, which I really like about his books. I think I gave the second one four stars on the... On third one five stars and I don't know I feel like I should have given them maybe both four stars the romance in this is like it's very powerful in the way that they have like a very good relationship and the same for the second book like if they just talk to each other more about their issues and thoughts and feelings like a lot of the things or issues that I have would be have been solved uh, but I guess that's if for like every relationship I don't know uh, so the romance in this, like, I'm not a huge fan of it. Everyone seems to worship them so much, but, like, I'm, I don't know. It's, like, kind of, like, yeah, they're good together. Like, they're soulmates, but it's, like, it's, like, a functioning relationship. And maybe that's, that's, like, what's wrong with it? Like, I'm always used to relationships where there's, like, so many issues, but there's a character in this, uh, I don't know how to say, Sazed? Sized? Say, say, Sazed? I want to say Sazed, but um, he is like amazing. He's like one of my favorite characters by uh, Brandon Sanderson. I think my favorite char character by Brandon Sanderson uh, is either Khalid from the Stormlight Archives or I want to say Lightbearer from the Warbreaker series. Uh, Warbreaker standalone. I think it's going to become a duology, but yeah. So the third one is in this book. Um, and I also think it's really interesting how certain creatures in this book. Uh, have been created and come forth and I think that's really interesting so I don't know it's definitely not my favorite book by Brandon Sanderson uh, also if you le read a lot of young adults and you're trying to get into adult fantasy highly recommend the series because it's a really really good transition from young adult to adult definitely both teenagers and adults can read this um, it's either I uh, highly enjoyable either way and lastly, I just want to talk about an audiobook that I read this month. I actually started it, I think, in early December, so it's a little bit late. But that's Radio Silence by Alice Osman, I think. And I got recommended to this random bit by Hannah, Clockwork Reader, Hannah, I don't know. We don't really have, like, the same taste in books, but I really like listening to uh, young adult contemporary when I'm listening to it like an audiobook. Uh, I use the app Audible for this. You basically follow Frances Xavier and she is like a nerd and she studies so hard and she really wants to get into Cambridge but she's also a really big fan of this podcast called, it's called Radio Silence. It was a while since I finished this. Yeah, she's, she's also making a lot of fan art for um, this podcast that she really likes and then basically just things happen. I don't really really want to reveal more than that but in the beginning I thought it was kind of like just like a light contemporary and I couldn't really get into it but the ending was really powerful. There is definitely trigger warnings for like emotional abuse and uh, animal abuse so I just want to say that but I actually really like this book. I think I gave it four stars and if you really like young adult contemporary then I would recommend it. So those are all the books that I read in January. I hope you guys enjoyed. Comment below uh, what books you read in January and I uh, go a friend and follow me on Goodreads if you want to. Then we can talk about books together. Like, is there anything greater? Uh, so I hope you guys all have a really brilliant day and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!